What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. I'm Bryden Strider, and today we're going back into Beacon Pines. Last time I played, uh, finished the game where I was kidnapped by some someone that looked like the CDA from Monsters, Inc. Uh, <laughs> so I have to go back to one of the points in the game where I can change my decision and what I say, uh, and that will affect the story. So let's go back and see what changes. Probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. All right, so, uh, let's see. So we don't really have many options, so we're going to go back to Rendezvous with Roxy. And use the uh, poop one. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little... Poop. <laughs> of course, it doesn't say poop, but... In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little... <laughs> Make a break for it. What have you done? Ah! Did that little just kick me? Run all you want, you little dwarps. You gotta come home eventually. That was funny. Sorry. That is funny. Sorry about that. Rolo can get overexcited sometimes. Solomon Valentine, current ward of and future successor to the Valentine fortune, huffed as he brushed off his pants. Town of complete and utter fools. One wonder if, if it's worth taking anything here seriously. Either way, I'm really sorry. No matter. How are you doing? Me? Yes, with all that business about your mother and whatnot. Oh, I'm getting by. Still no word from her at all? No. That is truly a shame. Shame. Aw. Your grandmother has taken residence to keep house. Yeah. And how is that going? We mostly stay out of each other's way. You make it sound like she's rarely at home. It's not like that. She just has a lot to do. Mm-hmm. She's still settling in and trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Indeed. Well, count your blessings. It's better to have a caretaker who is really around in lieu of one who tries to compensate by smothering you with attention. That doesn't sound so bad. Trust me when I say it's best to rely on yourself. Family has a way of creating more problems than they solve. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> Solomon. Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress, Valentine. Speak of the devil. Do not wander off like that. I'm much too busy to be looking all over for you. Apologies, heiress. I was just taking a stroll through town. Strolls are for commoners. You are Valentine now. I want you to be present for the construction of the History Museum. The future of this town relies on its ability to remember our family's great past. Of course. Okay. Should I talk to this guy again? I don't want him talking about my grandma. The way he did before. That was weird. Luca, my boy, hold up a tick. Uh, sorry, Mr. Nuncreed. Kind of in a hurry right now. <laughs> Boy got too much of his father in him. At least he didn't talk about my grandma. That would have been weird. Oh. Hey, Ben! Oh. Little help? That'd be me. Out of oh. shape. I oh. am the champion. We were racing? Did that road get longer? <laughs> like anything ever changes around here. 
It seemed longer. You're just lightheaded from the run. You really need to pace yourself better next time. Not sure why I would take advice from second place. Oh. Has that sign always been there? Wait, what? Caution, electrified fence. No, that's definitely new. Creepy. How are we gonna get around this electric, around an electric fence? Don't worry, I've got this. Why did you do that? Pa always says, you can figure out what the plan was when you're done. <laughs> Great, what now? Well, I did my part and established that touching the fence is bad. I'm sure you can handle it from here. I'll supervise. From a safe distance. <laughs> Alright, so we uh, picked up some stuff and threw it. That's done. Whoa, you're a genius. I know. I know. I think that did it. Luca. You never fail to impress. Here As we go. the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rolo began to bounce excitedly. Check it out. Dang, Rolo, you weren't exaggerating for once. Was there ever any doubt? This definitely needs investigating. Good thing two ace detectives are on the case. This is bizarre. This is awesome. Rumble. Did you feel that? What, the excitement in the air? You better your butt I did. <laughs> Check out this puddle. That's not normal. And this hose. Oh man, the door's locked. Try harder. No dice. It won't budge. Oh well. This dumpster's new, right? I bet it's got stuff in it. I can't really see what's in here. Who did all of this? My nose is itching. I think I can smell some treasure. Are you sure that isn't hazardous waste? Just help me get in. Rollo. It would be my honor to throw you in the trash. <laughs> Come on, Lady Luck. So, what's in there? Let's see. There's a squishy bag of squish. Wow. A good inch of stagnant sludge. Your natural habitat. Wait, hold the phone? Hold two phones? Check these bad boys out. Are those walkie-talkies? Just like Hank Atomic Communicators. Do these actually work? Ground Command to Hank Atomic. Hank, do you read me? This is Hank Atomic, Ground Command. You're coming in five by five. How, um, how are your vital readouts, Hank? It's getting a little stuffy in here. Requesting assistance for evac. Help is on the way. What was that? Someone's coming, give me your hand. I'm trying, my hands are covered in squish. <gasps> Scoot over, I'm coming in. Got a 2319, 2319. Uh, tell me you saw that. Dude, I don't know what I saw. He's coming back. Get down. Uh-oh. They're going to be covered in sludge. Or a body. The boy sat petrified under the weight of the bag. Oh, God. Tell me that's not what I think it is. Luca, do you know what separates run-of-the-mill detectives from ace detectives? A ridiculous hat. When the chips are down, ace detectives dig deeper for clues. Rolo felt around at the large sack which burdened them. Aha! He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. 
It's some sort of badge or something. What's it say? Bo held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Dr. Prescott, deep engineering. It's a name tag. Who would throw away a bag full of slimy old name tags? I think it's just one name tag in a bag full of something else. Okay, okay, okay. I think we should make a break for it. Stay calm. This is no time to panic. I'm not panicking. You're panicking. Rolo, calm down. You don't have to squeeze my hand so hard. Dude, I'm not holding your hand. Quit messing around. What other slime covered hand would be in here? Ah! Ah! You. I am beginning to see the benefits of your run for our lives plan. Right, we've clearly established that I'm faster than you, so I'll go first. Why not go together? Flaming chicken coop Luca. I'll make sure the coast is clear. After I go, count to 100. If you hear me yell, run. If you don't hear me yell, run. Actually, either way, haul butt. <laughs> Rolo, I'll give you credit. You sure found an eventful way to start our summer. It's what I do. Well, here goes nothing. Luca sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rolo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rolo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough! Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass! Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Chapter 3 Finding a Friend The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. I finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh-huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So what did you and Rollo get up to yesterday? Oh, nothing interesting. Hello. Calm down. No, oh, of course it was the right thing to do. Start gathering, folks. I'll be right there. Are you sure there isn't anything you want to tell me about yesterday? Anything I want to tell you? Not really. We sort of just ran around a bit. Grand's brow furrowed. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. I have to go take care of something. You are to stay in this house for the day. Under no circumstances are you to leave. What? If I'm not back by dinner, there's stew in the icebox. But, but nothing. You are to stay here, understand? Yeah. Say it. I'll stay here till you get back. Good. She knows something. Oh, and Luca, you left the icebox open yesterday. We're not made of money, you know. Well, that was strange. So, anything new to explore here? Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. A 
I guess we follow Granny. Grand Grand. A faint electronic sound floated in the air. Is that coming from upstairs? <laughs> Why is that drawer open? Ah, I closed it. <laughs> That's cool. Can you close the other stuff too? Can I close this? <gasps> you can. Is there other stuff to close? Can I close other things? Let's go upstairs. They want us to go upstairs, obviously. Hello? Is anyone there? It's the walkie talkie. Hello? Rollo, is that you? Over. Strange. Luca glanced at the now silent walkie-talkie. He wasn't sure what to think. There's a knock at the door. Hello? Ah, hold your horses. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm coming! You. <laughs> oh, hey, Roxy. This is about me uh, accidentally kicking you yesterday. Is Rolo here? No. Look at me, Luca. This is serious. Is Rolo here? No, I haven't seen him since yesterday. Rolo didn't come home last night. What? A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Where was the last place you saw him? Uh, we were playing around in Weep Wood, and then it was late and we went home. Weep Wood. If he's alive, I am going to kill that little creep. Is there anything else? Anything that he said? Luca's mouth felt dry. No, we were just messing around. Okay. I need to go let people know to check the woods. You just stay out of trouble. Go see if he's hiding in the library or something. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. Rolo. Where are you? Alright, it's time to disobey Granny and go out to the library. Guess I'll go this way. Nothing to see here. Hey Bert, have you seen Rollo? Nope. Though I've mostly been t talking to clipboards. They're setting up lots of stuff for the festival. This one said he had the process to process some answers. I told him that was fine. I'll wait right here until he gets back. We really need to get back to work. Just a couple more minutes. If Roxy said she will be here, then she will be here. I just don't see why I'm standing around doing nothing and waiting for Roxy. When I could be standing around doing nothing and getting paid for it. <laughs> Come on, Lumi. Roxy needs our help. Yeah, well, good intentions don't qualify as legal tender. Tender. Ugh, my parents wouldn't listen. No offense, but isn't Rollo always getting into trouble? Something feels different this time. What can we do to help? We need to check where the adults aren't. So I guess it's up to us to check Wheatwood. Our shift doesn't end for another couple of hours. We could spend the time making posters. That would be great. I guess. 
Right. Fitz and I will check Wheatwood. We'll be back later to pick up the posters. I think my dad was has a map of Wheatwood. Let's swing by my house and grab it before we head out. What's this about a missing child? I must stress the situation is completely under control. It just all seems so terrible. And you're sure there's nothing we can do to help? Nonsense, young Miss Carter. Young, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nonsense, young Mr. Cotter will turn up safe and sound, I am certain. Just focus on settling in. I trust my sister has supplied you with suitable lodging. Oh yes, Miss. Valentine has been more than accommodating. We're just telling our daughter, Beck, that. Now, where does she run off to? She got missing too? Maybe, maybe uh, she's heard something. Hey, Don. He on. Is it true about Rollo? Yeah, he didn't come home last night. I wonder if it's connected. Connected to what? I was checking on reports about increased activity around town. What sort of activity? Windowless trucks, mechanical noises, strange lights, your typical shady stuff. Who would be doing all that and why? Well, I have a few leads. The Valentine family is always suspicious. Perennial Harvest certainly has the resources. Do you have any idea where Rolo can be? The best place to start looking is where the trail went cold. Where did you see him last? We were in Wheatwood, right by Valentine's Fertilizer. I'll check out Wheatwood when my shift ends. I do my best work at night. I don't remember where the library was. This is the diner, right? Or is this the diner? I don't know. Maybe it was. Yeah, it's like a little diner place. I need to find the library. Let's end this way. The market. The museum. So I guess the well, I guess no no no. Library has to be this way then. There you go, there's the library. New editions. There were rarely any actual new editions. <laughs> Simply a variety of existing content rotated into the front display each week. Not fooling anyone. Oh the cobs I've eaten. A salad centric travel guide for the mildly adventurous. Yuck. Sally Seashore's simple succulent sundries. Luca brushed off a smudge of dust. Or maybe it was flour. 30 recipes so easy you'll doubt it's even edible. Succulent. A peek behind the curtain. The methods and ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu. One of the greatest acting minds of our time. By Patrick C. Montesquieu. <laughs> Oof. Mycological phosphorescence. Ugh. More like my complete loss of interest. <laughs> the bottom corner shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular biology and the chemistry of mitosis. Boring. The entire top level of the library was devoted to comics. Most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of lesser, revered spin-offs. See what this little wolf guy has to say. Hey Jace. Oh hey Luca. Did Rolo come by? No. I was actually surprised. He's usually here early on days when a new issue drops. Rolo's the biggest Hank Atomic fan I know. Besides myself, that is. Well, if he does swing by, tell him to meet me you know where. I don't know where. No, he knows where. Ah, uh, roger that, space cadet. Kato volunteered at the library during the summers. 
He wasn't very social, so he'd dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject, making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. If you were to ask Kato something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Hey, Kato. Kato was lost Kato. in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melatology. <laughs> oh, hey, Luca. You snuck up on me. Good book? Don't know. Just started it. He gestured to the shelves. I'm really running out of books I haven't read. Yeah. So now it's on the wonderful world of bees. Turns out bees are pretty cool. For instance, did you know that around 70% of bee species actually live in underground tunnels? Or that if there are two queens in a hive, they will fight to the death for supremacy? Fight. That's interesting, but you haven't seen Rolo around recently, have you? Not since yesterday. Keep an eye out for him, okay? Sure thing. If I see him, you'll be the first one to know. <laughs> what sort of monster puts candy behind a locked door? Oh yeah, Mr. Nunkrieg works weird hours sometimes. Of course he does. How about you? When do I work? No, what's your name? Luca Van Horn. You new here? Yep, not by choice. Sex family moved often giving her little time to establish any real connections. She would tell you she prefers it that way. I'm looking for my friend Rolo. He didn't come home last night. So he's missing? I guess so. Like, missing missing? Does that sort of thing happen a lot around here? Luca shifted his feet uncomfortably. Well, that sucks. Yeah. So I should probably get going. Hey, wait up. What? Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. I'm coming with you. What? So says the unlucky penny. Unlucky? Yep. Well, technically it land landed on heads. Leave this kid to find his friend alone. But I always do the opposite. Oh, that's kind of like me and Rolo. I guess Rolo is my unlucky penny. That settles it. A person should never be without their unlucky penny. Let's go find him. The name's Beck. Pleasure to meet you, Beck. I suppose I could use some help. Try to keep up. Dang, they boarded up the way in. Can go around. Yes, we can. Anything to explore first? The music has changed significantly. Property of Valentine Fertilizer Company. Looks old. Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Uh, is this sort of thing normal around here? Because puddles of glowing ooze are definitely not what I expected from this place. I have no idea what that stuff is. Well, the next obvious step is science. And what does science suggest? Book it with a stick. Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. What the? Cool. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Okay. So the science tells us the skunk is weird as hell. Oh yeah, it seems dangerous. Hey, Tish, look what the cat dragged in. Yep. I don't have time for this right now, Iggy. Oh, don't say things like that. It hurts Tish's feelings. Ain't that right, Tish? Yep. She looks fine to me. 
Why, hello. I don't think we have been properly introduced. Iggy's the name. This is my compatriot. 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 Tish. Yep. You've probably heard of us. Can't say I have. I'll forgive you just this once. I'm a kind of you being new around here. Why would you hang out with this dud? Oh, he seems pretty all right. Iggy, why do you have to be so... you? Has he even told you that his parents skipped down on him? Shut up. It's true, they got tired of having such a pathetic kid and left him. Iggy, I'm only gonna say this one time. Don't. Talk. About. My family. <laughs> well look who's grown a backbone now that a girl's around. First his pops croak, then his mom finally couldn't take it anymore and bounced. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought. Well. Time to bust out the tickles. <laughs> the strange. Let's bust out the strange. Well, time to bust out the strange. All right, Luca. Looks like you need a little mud bath. What's wrong with you, new kid? We're about to pound your friend. Beck stared in silence. The only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. It's weird when people don't talk. Yep. Stop being a weirdo. Uh, hello? Are you some kind of wackadoo? Makes sense. Wackadoos travel a pack, eh, dud? At the sight of Iggy taunting back, something in Luca snapped. Iggy's smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Uh, ooh. Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. You jerk, my clothes are ruined. I'm gonna... Iggy's voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. Struggle. I don't feel so good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... Oh, sh... Poop. Yep. That was intense. Iggy's gonna be okay, right? Nothing about this seems okay. The person at the warehouse, the strange ooze, and what it did to Iggy. Was Rolo caught up in all of this? We have to find Rolo. You took the words out of my mouth. Uh-oh. Whoa there, little buddies. You startled me. What in the dickens are you up to in this part of town? We're just hoping luck for Rollo. Oh, you haven't heard the good news. Rollo showed up safe and sound a bit ago. Really? So where was he? It's funny, really. He just got a little turn around in the woods. They can be disorienting, you know. I'm starting to get that impression. Rollo's at his house now, getting some well-deserved rest. Well, that re that's a relief. You two should scurry along before you get lost yourselves. Yeah, come on back. I can't wait to introduce you to Rollo. Oh, that reminds me. Luca, your grandmother was looking for you. She was? She was worried sick. You should march straight home. I guess. Beck, your folks might be getting worried too. I'll walk you home. I need to talk with Nelly about work anyway. Beck glanced toward Luca. I guess all's well that ends well. I'll introduce you to Rollo tomorrow. Sure. Glad he's okay. Rollo was safe. A wave of relief washed over Luca, which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Gran is going to kill me. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got something going on in Beacon Pines. I have no idea what's going on, <laughs> but something's going on. Something with the ooze making things old and then, or 
bringing life and then instantly destroying it. And then something happened to that one kid. He started turning into like a a monster or something. I don't know. And I, that that one guy, the hyena looking guy that came at the end, I don't trust him. There's something up with him. So at least Rello safe that we know of. We haven't seen him yet, but I'm sure we'll find out in chapter four. So make sure you press that notification bell so you know when the next video is up. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And until the next one, I'll be seeing you.